Sveiki, and welcome to... This is Europe, and here's Latvia. Now let's go, shall we? When the frost-caked land of future Latvia melted into habitability during the enfeeblement of the Ice Age, hunters trod onto our stage, stalking reindeer and other prey to feed and clothe them in the bitter cold. This hard, rugged existence persisted for millennia as the Neolithic era saw the arrival of a people called the Balts, who settled in the area and made it home. To this day, we call this area of Europe the Baltic, and that's the Baltic Sea. There were several tribes of Balts, one of which was the Latgalians, from whom the modern Latvians derive their name. Latvia was firmly embedded in the northern reaches of the Amber Road trade route, its particular varieties of fossilized tree resin being highly prized by the Romans. You might even say they liked them a lot. So the years passed and the Latvians fished and farmed, and the 10th century saw a Slavic-run state arise in the east, called Yersiki, whose princes were Orthodox Christians. The majority of the populace remained comfortably pagan, however, which by the late 11th hundreds troubled the Pope, who eventually ordered a crusade to convert the Baltic region by force, and in went the German knights for that purpose. The driving force for much of this effort in Latvia was Albrecht, Bishop of Riga, who spent decades conquering the land for the cross, and who founded the order of warrior monks called the Livonian Brothers of the Sword. Under German rule, castles were built and trade encouraged, and various Latvian towns became part of the Germanic Hanseatic League of Merchants. In 1521, the fruits of Martin Luther's Reformation entered Latvia, and the following decades would see more and more people swap Catholicism for Protestantism. These were tumultuous times, however, and Latvia was swept up into the Livonian War that saw a Russian invasion and the country ultimately gobbled up by the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, in which it formed part of the Duchy of Livonia. More foreign rule followed after the Polish-Swedish War, when the Empire of Sweden took charge of the land. Thankfully, however, the Swedes were benign rulers and introduced several reforms. These happier days began to end in the early 1700s, when the Russians took over, following Tsar Peter I's victories against Sweden in the Great Northern War, in which the Latvian people suffered terribly from the atrocities of war and a devastating outbreak of famine and plague. Now, the German minority had retained immense power and influence in Latvia all through these centuries, but now, in the 19th century, as serfdom was abolished and Latvians were influenced by the nationalist ideas spreading elsewhere in Europe at the time, a group of Latvian intellectuals began to promote the Latvian language and culture amid to the Russo-Germanic forces dominating the country. So Latvians began venturing into the politics of their homeland as the world was fast changing and technology modernized and hopes and trepidations pulsed in every heart. The left-wing activists roared the loudest during the 1905 Russian Revolution in which Russian troops shot demonstrators in Riga, killing over 70. Anger grew, especially against the privileged German elite and the unrest continued and the First World War only added to the misery with many thousands of Latvians killed in action. After Russia fell to the communist Bolsheviks, Latvia, in 1918, declared independence. Soviet Russia promptly invaded, and it was war, and the Latvians fought heroically alongside their allies and were victorious in retaining their freedom. In 1934, Karlis Ulmanis took control of the government and led the nation as a dictator until 1940, when the Soviets returned and gained power, and a time of terror ensued, and thousands of Latvians were sent off to the dreaded Gulag prison camps. Most of the Germans had left Latvia by this time, but 1940, saw other Germans arrive, the Nazis, who conquered the country, mercilessly crushed opposition, burnt villages, and slaughtered Jews and other undesirables. 1944 saw the Soviets return, and the sorrows of Latvia continued as Stalin oversaw forced deportations of thousands of perceived state enemies to Siberia, with no hope of seeing their homes ever again. Luckily for Latvia, Stalin died, and things were far less insane in the following years, as Latvia, which had seen considerable Russian immigration, became an important industrial sector of the Soviet Union. Still, liberty is always more welcome than subjugation. And in the late 1980s, Latvia, along with its neighbors, began demonstrating for independence, a dream that was finally achieved in 1991. Latvia subsequently joined NATO and the European Union, and today it is a rich, peaceful nation with a very high human development index ranking, which I think we all can agree it more than deserves after enduring so many centuries of pain. What awaits Latvia in the future? Comment below. But for now, bye-bye! Thank you.